Uh oh. Why peeing in pools is more dangerous than you think. Just because school's starting doesn't mean that summer's over. It's still oppressively humid in most places, so some of you, or a lot of you lucky ones who live where it's pretty hot all year round, might still be heading to the pool to escape the heat. Of course, they always have signs up reminding swimmers not to be in the water. But a lot of people simply think, it's no big deal. The chlorine kills the germs anyway. Well, in today's video, you're going to find out that peeing in the pool absolutely is a big deal and why you really shouldn't do it. But first, here's your friendly reminder to subscribe to our channel and ring that bell to be notified each time something new comes out for you here on the Bright Side of Life, which is every single day. Now, let's talk about why the pool isn't your personal toilet. Swimming pools are kept clean in a variety of ways. A water filter removes pollutants, Disinfectant kills infectious microorganisms. Rules to encourage swimmer hygiene help minimize the introduction of contaminants into the water. And regularly testing the water's chlorine and pH levels makes sure the chemical content stays safely balanced. Because outdoor pools are exposed to a whole host of contaminants, like windblown dirt and debris, rain containing microscopic algae spores, runoff from unsanitary sources, and bird droppings, to name a few. They're subject to much more stringent sanitation practices than indoor pools. Swimmers bring their own contaminants into the water with them, like the oils from their sweat, any cosmetics or sunscreen they have on, their saliva, and, of course, urine and fecal matter. Researchers at the University of Alberta calculated that one commercial-sized swimming pool, which holds 220,000 gallons of water, has about 20 gallons of urine. Yuck! But hey, at least the chlorine is there to keep you safe from all of that, right? Wrong! It's a common misconception that the chlorine in swimming pools kills germs. While it is true that chlorine can destroy and deactivate a wide range of bacteria and viruses, it gets much more difficult for it to work efficiently when it comes in contact with the urea in urine. You know that chemical smell that tickles your nose whenever you go to a pool? That's not chlorine. It's actually chloramines which form when chlorine comes into contact with organic compounds like sweat, dirt, body oils, and urine. That's right, that strong odor you've come to associate with swimming pools means that whoever was there before you has been doing more than just swimming. You still want to jump in? Coming into contact with those organic compounds can irritate your skin, eyes, and lungs. But when the chlorine is too busy working to protect you from all that, it's stretched too thin to protect you from the real nasty stuff that the pool's disinfectants are supposed to kill. You see, the disinfectants are really a mixture of liquid bleach, calcium hyperchlorite, and lithium hyperchlorite that produces chlorine rather than a molecular chlorine compound. They're important in that they attack the membrane and proteins of the microorganisms that might get you sick such as viruses, bacteria, protozoa, and fungi. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that chlorine can kill the E. coli bacterium in less than a minute, the hepatitis A virus in 16 minutes, the Giardia parasite in 45 minutes, and the Cryptosporidium parasite in 10.6 days. 
When any of these nasty waterborne diseases get into your system, they produce symptoms of severe cramps, diarrhea, vomiting, and fever. Believe it or not, you already have E. coli in your lower intestine, and it helps your body by producing vitamin K2 and preventing other pathogenic bacteria from colonizing your guts. When it gets out of your body and comes back in, though, it's not so friendly. You get it through exposure to fecal matter in contaminated food or water, and it can cause gastroenteritis, urinary tract infections, neonatal meningitis, hemorrhagic colitis, and Crohn's disease. Hepatitis A attacks your liver, and while there's no cure for those who have it, there is a vaccine for prevention. Giardiasis is one of the most common parasitic diseases in humans, with about 280 million people diagnosed in 2013. Most cases occur in the developing world, but there's also a risk of outbreaks from coming into contact with contaminated pool water. Cryptosporidium is also pretty common, with about 200,000 cases documented in the United States each year. Like the other diseases already mentioned, it's transmitted through contaminated food or water. You know, like accidentally swallowing some pool water that just happens to have microscopic bits of someone else's number one and number two floating in it? I tell you what, that's not a risk I'm willing to take just because someone else was too lazy to get out of the pool and go to the bathroom. So, chlorine is already working hard to protect us from all this really unpleasant stuff. But by peeing in the pool, you're sort of distracting the chlorine from its main job and giving these bacteria, viruses, and parasites more room to grow. When these microorganisms are left unchecked and given the chance to multiply, they form biofilm, which can accumulate on any wet surface. It's a sort of protective layer that the microorganisms form against chlorine and other disinfectants by sticking to each other and then sticking to that wet surface. These diseases are completely preventable, both at and away from the pool. All you have to do is follow these tips. Make sure to take a shower before and after swimming to both reduce the chance of introducing contaminants and to help remove any you might have come into contact with. Don't go to a public pool if you're sick or have been sick within the last two weeks. Try to avoid swallowing pool water whenever possible. Bring a chlorine testing strip to the pool with you to make sure it's at safe levels. You can find some for free at healthypools.org. It's recommended that the pool have at least one milligram of chlorine per liter of water. You should always wash your hands after going to the bathroom, cleaning up your pet's poop, or changing your baby's diaper. It's especially important to have clean hands before handling food. Also, be sure to thoroughly wash and cook your food before you eat it. And, of course, don't pee in the pool! I really can't emphasize this enough, guys. It should go without saying, but it's crucial to wash your hands, clean your food, and only go to the bathroom in appropriate locations if you're not interested in getting really sick. Who would be, anyway? Plus, not only are you protecting yourself from harmful infections and diseases, but also others who share this world and the pool with you. Ever wonder why we're not all dying from the Black Plague anymore? It's because we finally figured out that it wasn't a good idea to throw buckets full of pee and poop into the street, and therefore invented indoor plumbing. Do you know why typhoid isn't very common anymore? It's because we learned our lesson after the infamous Mary Mallon, a cook in the early 20th century, didn't wash her hands and ended up infecting 51 innocent people with typhoid fever, giving her the nickname Typhoid Mary. Hygiene is simple, folks. Sure, it's a little inconvenient to get out of the pool, find a bathroom, and peel your wet bathing suit off. But when you're putting others' lives and wellness at risk, this sort of behavior isn't just laziness, it's negligence. So please, don't be in the pool and spread this message to everyone you know by sharing this video with them. 
And if you have any other important hygiene tips, let us all know in the comments below. Give this video a like if you learned something new or agree with the message we're putting out there. And of course, subscribe and hang out with us on the Bright Side of Life!